In this video we are going to design a suspension spring. So this is the type of spring that we are going to design. This is a suspension spring for uh, downhill mountain bikes. And the design idea comes because I have this spring around my house. It's from my downhill mountain bike. And if you did my Katia V5 course, I was discussing in that course about different ideas of how you can practice Katia V5 by yourself. And one of those ideas is to design things that you have around your house. So everything you have and it's a mechanical thing and it can be designed, not a bottle or a table that's made out of wood. Try to stick to things that are from your fields, if it's the mechanical field especially. So I found a few things around my house that I can design now for this course and this is one of them. And this is another picture with the spring and how it looks. So those here are not dimensions, those are something else. You notice how the spring has a flat end, so those are used to keep the spring in the correct position. And this is where the spring is located on a suspension from a downhill mountain bike. And if we zoom in here, you can see how the spring ends here. And this is a plate that is part of the suspension, so this on this plate, the flat side from the spring will sit on. And the spring sits between this plate and this plate, so that's why it needs to have two flat sides. And we are going to design all of those details. And this is how it looks. You see that here, you need to do this part at uh, the end of the spring. So you see that the pitch changes here. There is a certain pitch here and then it changes. It becomes smaller. So you see, a spring cannot be used like this in reality because this is it doesn't have a flat surface where it can sit. So let's start. Let's open a new part. And in order to design a spring, we are going to need to do a staircase spiral curve. And that's called a helix. And that command cannot be done in a Katia part design. That can only be done in a generative shape design. So if you don't know how to use generative shape design, it's no problem because we are going to use only one command. So when you enter generative shape design, you are going to need this toolbar, which is called wireframe. We are going to use points and planes from around here. But there is also a secondary toolbar in here, which is uh, the last command, as we can see here. And this one is called curves. So let's use this. And the second command is called a helix. So if you click on it, we are going to use this to create the central curve of the spring. And you can see that this one's asking for a starting point and an axis. So let's start first by designing those. So an axis, we are going to need an axis that it's uh, right in the middle of the spring. And I would like the planes to be right in the middle of the spring. I don't want them to be at the top or at the bottom of the spring. So the first thing that uh, we have to design here is a point and that this one has to be right in the middle of the planes at the intersection of the three planes. So that's why it's going to be coordinates 0, 0, 0. Click OK. And then we click on a line. We do point direction. We choose this point and as direction we choose this plane. And we are going to do this 50 millimeters and 50 millimeters on the other way. In fact, it has to be minus 50 on the other way. Click OK. So this is going to be the axis. I'm going to change here, make it look like an axis. And then we need a point, a starting point for the helix. And that has to be right at the beginning where the helix starts to go down. So in this moment, we need to come up with the dimensions of the spring. And this is what we can do. I'm going to design a point. So the Z direction is this one. And we are going to use as the length of the spring. We are going to use 160 millimeters. That means that it's going to be 80 up, 80 down. So let's do this. Let's write 80 here this direction so this is going to be here but the starting point it it's not in the middle of the spring so it's going to be where the first 
part of the helix starts so we need to move it so we need also need to give it diameter by moving this point and that's going to be the x axis if you if you don't know how to pick up those axes you just look here at the compass you see this line it's the x axis this is the this is the x axis right here this is the z axis right here so you see z y x so this is how you look after them and of course you will see it move so that's your confirmation so the diameter of the spring is going to be 45 millimeters this is uh, what i measured on this spring that i have here so we are going to do 22.5 because this is the middle let's do 22.5 so you see now the point is here so this is what uh, we need click ok so now we have a point in the axis for the helix click on the helix starting point this one axis this one we see it forming on the upside so i'm going to do the reverse direction so the height is going to be as we said 160 millimeters and the pitch that i measured on the spring it's around 18 millimeters and if you click preview you can see that this is the helix that we did with this command so we click ok here and if i go here i like to hide the points that uh, are used for the helix and now i need to do the section of the spring so for that i'm going to use this plane so i'm going to, now we can go in part design mode so we did the, the helix and in here i'm going to create a sketch on this plane and right here in this point i'm going to do the profile of the spring so the diameter of the spring it's 8.5 millimeters this is the diameter and we are going to position this right here on this point so we have to make a coincidence exit the sketch and here we have it this is ready for uh, extruding this around the helix so if you choose the rib command profile the circle and the center curve is the helix preview you can see here that uh, those lines that are part of the helix so they're kind of they have different kind of inclination because this is how katia process this solid so we can give it an extra parameter here to make this better and at profile control instead of keep angle we can use pulling direction so we can show the direction that uh, this solid is going so it's going up and down and if i choose the axis now it has a direction now it's no where it's going if you click preview you see that all of those are straight now there uh, we have a symmetry here now i click ok so now if you are happy with the dimensions of the spring with the pitch and the diameter that can always be changed by changing the helix we can start to design the ends here so this is how we are going to do that we are going to design a smaller helix in here and for that we need a point so we can use the point the end point from uh, the old helix and we can use the same axis so we don't need to create something else i'm just going to change the color here so we can see better the lines and let's make this perspective so we can see better here so now if you go to generative shape design click on the helix starting point use this point and the axis and this time this is going to go up so we don't need to change the direction the height is going to be around 11 millimeters and the pitch is going to be way smaller 
than this one so this pitch it's 18 millimeters we are going to do it we can do it half of that pitch so we can reduce that to nine let's click ok and then for the solid we can just make here a sketch on this face and project this edge so we don't need to create a circle exit the sketch in part design we use the rib command profile center curve pulling direction we use the axis the same axis that we have and we see that this part of the spring now it's it has a smaller pitch but i want this to touch here almost because in reality that it's touching here so to do that i'm going to need to change the pitch of the helix so if we do it 8.5 click ok now i can see that it almost touches so that's okay that uh, it's, a, it's a very small distance so this is uh, this end of the spring so now to create the flat side i'm going to have to offset a plane from the center here so i'm going to drag it here in this uh, area let's do 95 Let's leave it like that. And in here I'm going to use the split command and split everything from this uh, plane. But I want to keep uh, what's below it. So we have to move this downwards around 5 millimeters, let's say. So instead of 95 we are going to do 90, 90. Click OK. So you see now we have this flat surface and this is how I managed to measure this I managed to measure this uh, edge here in reality it's about 7 millimeters this one here it's 8.2 so we can move the plane down a little more to see uh, if this changes so let's make this 89 move this down another millimeter if I measure this edge now it's 7.5 let's try another millimeter let's do it 88 now it's 6 so it's too much let's uh, do 88.5 6.8 so in reality it was 7 and I think it's uh, okay and also those edges around here there are filleted in reality so uh, i'm going to add a fillet here here and here of 0 0.3 so they probably just been they have been uh, brushed with uh, sandpaper just to take off the sharp edges because this can be very sharp when it's polished like that So if I hide this superior helix, also hide the plane, you can see that uh, this one has a flat surface here. Okay. So now let's do the same thing on this other end. Generative shape design. Let's create a helix. Starting from this point with this axis. It needs to be on the other side, so it's reverse direction. Height. Let's try uh, the same thing, 11, with a pitch of 8.5. Okay, let's make, a, let's go into part design, make a sketch on this face. Project, it's a sketch, we use rib, profile, the sketch. Pulling direction. Let me use this uh, axis here. Okay. So we have the same thing. 
Now, I don't know if the plane is going to be exactly the same. So this plane was 88.5. So let's uh, try and do the same thing. Plane. Reverse direction, 88.5. Okay. Use the split command. Split. Click OK. And let's do a measurement on this edge. Make sure that we are there. 6.8, so yeah, it's okay. Let's add the uh, fillets. 0 0.3. Click OK. So now let's hide those construction elements everywhere. The line, the points, and the helix. And also the central planes. Let's save the part. And this is uh, the project. So this part is finished now. And what I would uh, recommend is to play around and try to do different type of springs. Maybe you can uh, find a vehicle spring for uh, from a car. Even online you can find some... Uh, dimensions so the dimensions that you need are the length the diameter and the pitch so if you have those three you can design all type of springs so try and design a spring for a vehicle this would be a very good uh, exercise for you so see you in the next video